my card here. As we can see, we have a few of our reference images already set up. If you press F on your keyboard, you can see your front view, top view, and left side view. Um, I'm going to show you how to get to this point, and in following tutorials, I will show you how to go from here. So this will be the end result at the end of this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this for now, and we can start fresh. So if we go to our top viewport um, by pressing T on the keyboard, that's where we're going to begin. And I'm going to start off by creating a box um, in the front here. And I'm going to my front view by pressing F on my keyboard. And I am going to move my box up, and we can start scaling it from there. So the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using are W, E, and R. W is for select and move. E is for select and rotate, and R is for select and scale. Um, so keep those in mind, it makes your modeling and navigation around the viewport a lot easier. So first things first, um, let's right click and convert this to an editable poly so we can actually do something with it. And I'm going to take these first two vertices, I'm going to move them down along the Y axis to fit them to the front of the car. And then let's take these back vertices and bring them back to the extent of the car. Um, now, I'm going to make a couple of minor adjustments to fit it to the overall body, trying to keep the bottom as square as I can. And um, this looks like a good starting spot. So, obviously, I can't see through my geometry here. So what we want to do is we want to turn on our um, x-ray mode or see-through mode. So if you do all X, um, that should work. If it does not, then you're going to right-click on your object, go to Object Properties, and make sure this by layer is unchecked so you have the see-through option. Um, then you should be able to toggle Alt-X, and you should be able to see everything. Um, so obviously, if I'm looking at this, I can't do much with the middle of my uh, box I made here, so I have to add more segments. So I'm going to go to my edge mode. Um, I can do a marquee selection around my object to select all of the um, horizontal edges here. Or I can click on one edge and do ring, and that also achieves the same thing. So once I have all these edges selected, I want to connect them. And if I go to the type in tool, I can say one, two, three, four segments, um, and that looks good. So with these segments, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving them around so they fit my geometry here. Um, my personal preference is I like to use the ring connect tool um, versus a swift loop because um, it keeps my geometry a little bit straighter um, and I feel like I have more control over it, but that's a uh, personal preference. So I want to bring all of these down so they're level on the same plane, ideally. And we can always add in more edges later. Let's bring this one up. Um, I can't see much over there, but that's OK. Um, let's bring this one over here. Let's do this one here for now. And um, that should be good. All right, so let me go ahead and straighten this out. And, and straighten this one out as well. Um, you don't have to do this. Um, it's just a personal preference. And I'm going to add another edge in here. So I'm going to type in tool, make sure I only have one edge segment. I'll press 1 on my keyboard to access my vertex mode. So I can bring some of these up. And let's do one final one here so we can get some of this part taken care of. Alright, and this should be pretty good for now. So um, now that we have the side somewhat put together, 
we want to make sure that we check our top viewport too. So I'm going to go to our top viewport and we're going to see that we haven't done much here. So I'm going to make sure I do a marquee selection over all my vertices. I'm going to go to my select and scale, which if you remember is R on my keyboard. And I'm just going to start scaling these out along the Y axis. Now if you want to do this manually um, and moving them, you can also do that. It's entirely up to you. And so far, this is about what I want. And we can do some fine tuning later bit, a little bit later on. Not right now. All right, cool. So now I want to add a little bit more geometry in here. Um, I want to make this part fit a little bit better, so I will select my edges, do connect, um, and I can activate my vertex sub-object and move these parts out. And I also want to add geometry down the middle. So I will go to ring, and you'll notice that all of my edges here are now selected. I will press connect once, and that will make a nice line down the center. Now, if this happens to you here, which I'm not sure why it happened for me, um, I'm going to go ahead and redo that. And that's a little bit better. Not sure why that happened before. But you should get something that looks like this. Um, like I said, I like to straighten out my lines as best as I can. Um, that way I just have solid geometry um, that I'm working with and I don't have vertices that look strange. Um, so I'm just going to spend a couple seconds and straighten this out. Perfect. So now we haven't looked at the front of the car at all. So if you press L on your keyboard, you're going to see that um, our geometry isn't lining up very well with the center of the car. So a few things that we need to do to fix that is we need to recognize these edges here in this slope. Um, and we have to start defining that slope there. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to start off by going to my top view and I'm going to select my center line here that I just created and I'm actually going to chamfer it. So chamfering is, allow me, is going to allow me to split this line into two separate parts. So I go to the type in tool again. I'm going to chamfer out this line um, to about 5 or 6. Let's do like 5.3, 5.5. That looks pretty good. I'll say the check mark to amend that. Um, and now I have a little bit more to work with. All right, awesome. So we're going to come back and we're going to work on that part a little bit later. Um, but that's going to be important from making this curved surface. The first thing that we want to define are these two slants here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, these pieces here, these edges. Let's actually deselect this one to start. I apologize, my computer is going a little bit slow, so it's not listening to my commands here. Okay, let's try this again. Alright, so I'm sorry for the delay there. My computer decided to crash on me. Um, but to continue on with what I was saying, what we want to do is we want to start defining this slope here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these edges here um, on both sides. I held down control as I selected each one. 
Um, I'm going to go to my select and move, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring those down. And actually, I'm going to deselect this edge and this edge. I don't like the way that looks at the moment. Uh, change our mind. So I'll bring those down to about here. Let's go to my left viewport and see how far I want to bring those down. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but we'll start editing that in just a second. So let's go back to our front view where you can see these lines. And here we have a clear view of where um, this slope is actually happening. So we want to align this right at that light blue area. So we're doing a marquee selection around each one, so it selects both the front and back on each side. And let's go ahead and add in one more edge here. I just want to double check my selection here, and we can also bring this one down, and that looks pretty good. So here, if we go back to our front view, you can see that our car is starting to form a little bit. Um, it's taking a better shape. So what I can start doing from here is I can start shaping out the top of my car um, and playing around with some more of these dimensions. Because what we need is we still need to define the slope here, and that isn't really being done for us yet. So what I want to do is I am actually going to do a swift loop on either side here, um, and that's going to allow me to bring down this geometry to make more of a sharper edge here. So let's go up to Edit. Let's go to Swift Loop. And let's do one right about here. I'm going to my top view to see this. So about midway, and about midway. And if we go to my edge selection here, and I go to my select and move tool, I can actually take these edges on either side. And I can also start to bring these down a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my x-ray mode. I'm going to add in my vertices here. And I'm going to start bringing these down to the top part of that shadow area. And as you can see, my loops aren't lined up perfectly. So I can just move my vertices if I want to. Not a huge deal, but I like working with pieces that are as symmetrical as possible. And if we go back to my left viewport, get out of see-through mode, um, you can see that some more of this has been defined a little bit better. So as we are coming to a close on this car, um, at least the basic modeling of the body, there's a few things that I want to clean up. Um, part of that is right up here in this area. Um, I don't like how square it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my Select and Scale tool um, I'm going to bring that in along the y-axis a little bit, and then use my select and move tool to bring these down pretty significantly. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to help me round out that area. Then I'll take just the exterior ones, push these down to round that out a little bit more, and let's do the same thing for these edge pieces. All right. Um, and then we can actually do the same thing for the front. Bring these down. Use your select and scale tool to push them in. And we're just adding detail at this point. To make these pieces appear, appear a little bit more rounded. 
We're going to be doing quite a bit of work on the bottom, so don't worry too much about this. <coughs> All right, that's looking a little bit better. Now to add in some of the um, finishing touches with this basic modeling, um, I want to bring up some of this geometry up here so we can start to get this curve. So I'm going to go to my polygon mode, and actually I'm gonna bring this out just a little bit. So it's about the width of this guy here. And using our Select and Move tool, let's just bring this up to give that a little bit of dimension. Um, I'll go ahead and just select this polygon here, bring it up a little bit further. And as you can see, that's starting to take shape. We'll start to add a little bit more geometry in here. Um, in the next part. And here I'm just fine tuning my design a little bit. Um, you should use this time to also do the same. And I'm going to come back down here to my front to these polygons and um, I'm going to bring them up just a little bit to round that shape out. Alright, once you are satisfied with the look of your vehicle, um, keep in mind this is relatively crude right now. So if it doesn't look exactly like the model, that is okay, it's not supposed to. I'm going to take a couple of these vertices as well and bring these down. Awesome. Do that one more time. Check my Alt X, see where we're at. Um, we'll add in some of this detail later, but so far, so good. So, when you have gotten this far, we are actually going to go to the bottom and we're going to delete our bottom geometry. So, I want you to click your polygon. Um, you can click on one of the center pieces and you can say grow, grow. Um, it might not do all of them, but you can go ahead and delete that section, hold down control, and select the remaining polygons that need to be removed. Oops. And this back section as well. Excellent. And from here, we can move on to the next part of our car.